So here I am at home, about to leave for Henry Stewart Dam LA. I'm excited. Although there's two to three feet of snow on the ground here, um, I have to say it's a gorgeous day and uh, I wouldn't otherwise want to leave, but for Henry Stewart, Dam LA, I'm down. Let's go. Henry Stewart, Dam LA, here comes the BBP, the Dam Right Podcast. All right, here we are, day one of the Henry Stewart Conference. Let's, uh, let's go in and let's talk to some people. I'm here with Christine LeCouliard from Henry Stewart. And Christine, how's the conference going so far? Oh, Chris, it's great. There's a real buzz, a real buzz about the place. We've seen folks coming from all over, not just the US, but overseas. And they're just hungry for content, hungry for networking, hungry to see what's next on the agenda. Yeah, and you've got such unique insights because you help put the program together for Henry Stewart every year. So are there topics or themes that you think are emerging this year that are new? Great question. I think we're looking at global expansion, how DAM is that helpful catalyst within an organization to help companies grow and expand. And with the whole personalization of content, outreach, and so on, that is, is certainly high up on the agenda. Connected to that is AI, generative AI. Where's that leading? It's scary, but there's an opportunity there too yeah. to make it work for you. I'm here with Amy Rudersdorf, Director of Consulting Operations at AVP. And we're starting the day, day one of the Henry Stewart Dam LA conference. And Amy, love to hear what, what are you excited to hear about at this conference? I'm really excited to see what the Maple Leafs are doing with their dam. Uh, they are talking about moving from implementation and, and, and moving a million objects into their dam in a short period of time, and then uh, bringing their strategic plan to the larger organization, so bringing it enterprise-wide, all while the, um, you know, the Maple Leafs are playing and they're adding new assets all the time. So it's, it'll be exciting to see what they're doing. All right, I'm here with Matt Caruvala from Fidel. Matt, what are you most excited about talk, hearing about it, this uh, conference this year? Well, I'm tempted to say spending time with you, Chris, because this has already been so much fun. <laughs> but I am really excited to see how brands are handling all their licensed content and managing those rights and making sure that's easy and automating that because I just feel like that's a bigger part of how content's being made nowadays. So you gotta have a way to solve it that doesn't require a whole lot of humans. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear how people are doing that today. I'm here with Yona Levinson. Yona, can you tell us a little about who you are first? Sure. I am the uh, co-academic director of the Rutgers Dam Certificate Program, uh, State University of New Jersey. And uh, with, along with David Lipsy is the other co-academic director. And I'm also a metadata and taxonomy strategy consultant. Great, great. And you've been coming to Harry Stewart for a long time now. Um, this is true. What, what would you say, what are you seeing as some of the themes or trends uh, over these years and kind of where we are today? So way back when at the beginning it was, what's a dam? Uh -huh. And then it was, how do I update my dam? And then it was, how do I replace my dam? And then it, it's become, how do I integrate my dam with other systems? And now it's, how do I get my dam not just to integrate with other systems, but also to push the envelope and how much can I do within and across my dam. And there's also been, um, I think, a much bigger interest in metadata and taxonomy because it's, it's being recognized that you have to have a way to have commonalities and normalize language across multiple systems if you're gonna do it right. Yeah. So that this way when senior management says, hey, can you get me a report on this? You're not going to like necessarily 15 different places and then having to figure out, does this really mean that? Right, right, yep. Okay, 
Great. Well, thank you for that insight. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, I'm here with Phil Seibel from Aldis. Uh, Phil, what are you most excited about uh, at this conference this year? Yeah, honestly, I'm just really excited to see what people are doing, what's new in the industry, how things are trending. It always feels like at this conference that people are both looking to share everything they've learned and find new things, and it's really interesting to see where people have made up ground and where they're still looking to make up ground in the industry, and I really like to feel the pulse of things here. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Awesome. All right, here to feel the pulse. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Thanks. I'm here with D Nina Damavandi uh, from USC, Digital Asset Manager. And Nina, I'd love to hear, what are you most excited about? Any particular topics or sessions or anything at the conference this year? Yeah, I think um, the main thing I'm excited about is how companies are using AI and machine learning in their damn workflows uh, to expedite the tagging process. That's kind of me. One of our biggest uh, struggles at USC is getting enough data on our assets. And so if there is a way to make that faster. And I look at our assets, they share so much in common, like there should be a way to make this easier without so much human labor needed. Yeah. And, and we're about halfway through the first day, so have you gotten any nuggets yet or? Yeah, yeah, there were a couple of good sessions this morning on um, the topic of AI, like Netflix gave a great presentation. So I, I think they are much further ahead with it than we are, but it is really cool to see what the potential is. All right, I'm here with Billy Hinshaw, Bissell Home Care. Billy, what are you most excited about at the conference this year? Just the continuing uh, networking opportunities, meeting so many people, hearing their stories, hearing about what they do, uh, and seeing where there's similarities in terms of the accomplishments and the struggles that they deal with. Uh, I think the biggest benefit of attending these conferences is that we realize we're not alone. We might be on an island, you know, at our particular companies, but that's not the reality as far as our industry is concerned, nor should it ever be. Yeah, well, that's that's fantastic uh, summary of the value of Henry Stewart for sure. Now, you're a past presenter at Henry Stewart, and you're presenting this year uh, popular sessions. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you're presenting on tomorrow? I'm presenting on the different responsibilities that damn professionals have to balance and, and uh, how to best manage that without losing Losing, losing your mind, basically. Yeah, that's important to keep your mind intact. Awesome, well thank you, Billy, I appreciate it. Yep, thank you, Chris. I'm here with Leslie Eames. Leslie, can you tell us who you are? Yeah, uh, I'm Leslie, I'm the Director of Digital Collections and Initiatives at the Maryland Center for History and Culture. Great, and is there any particular topics or sessions or anything that you're most excited about this year at the conference? Yes, uh, I'm really looking for ways to automate our metadata processes so we can ingest more of our data into our dam. Um, so looking at machine learning and AI tools that can help us and then also exploring some of the ethical implications behind those, knowing that um, you know we want to be deliberate about um, who's benefiting from the data we're sharing uh, when we use those tools. Yeah, the ethics part of that is a very important part of that conversation, yes. so that makes sense. Are you, have you, uh, we're about halfway through the first day so far, so have you, have you gotten what you're looking for yet, or are you hopeful to find it in the coming day and a half? Um, I feel like it's coming together slowly. I'm getting pieces here and there from a lot of different sources, so um, uh, I've learned a lot and hoping to learn more and make connections with others that uh, continue to grow my knowledge. All right, so I'm here with Emily Somak from National Geographic. Emily, thanks for talking to me, I appreciate it. Sure. Uh, so we're nearing the end of the conference on day two. Are there any particular themes or takeaways that you found interesting this year? Yeah, definitely. I think the biggest takeaway um, and theme too is that the dam, the dams is really at the center of an ecosystem. Um, mm. We all have other systems that are integrating with it and communicating with it and just always keeping that in mind um, when you're working in the dams or changing things in the dams or building a dams, um, just knowing that eventually it's gonna be connecting and talking to all these other systems that either you or your you know, coworkers or other teams in your organization are using. Um, so I think that's just an important thing to keep in mind. And then um, I guess some other I guess, yeah, always thinking about the next step and the future and what you can do to set yourself up for success. Um, migration is just a big part of our, of our world. So mm. always knowing that you might be having to migrate down the road or bringing stuff in from another system eventually um, and kind of keeping that in mind and making sure everything works together and is standardized. I am Christina Aguilera and I have multiple jobs. So we'll start off with my most recent. So I am currently, I just joined Crunchyroll. 
So I'm the Vice President of Product for Enterprise Technology, and Enterprise Technology to Crunchyroll is basically the entire studio workflow. So it is amazing the way that we incorporate asset management into the operations of getting content published to a platform. So that's an incredible opportunity. I'm also the president of Women in Technology Hollywood Foundation. So as part of Women in Technology Hollywood Foundation, that is my nonprofit where I get to spend all my passion. Um, so we do a lot of professional development opportunities. We've got mentorship programs. Uh, we do live events in the spring and the fall. The spring is technology focused, the fall is leadership focused. So it's a great combination and a great network. Awesome. Um, and then also, I am launching a new business with some incredible women out there. So in March on International Women's Day, we launched the brand and it's called Enough. Um, and it's basically, we are going out there to all of those women leaders globally and making sure they know they are enough. So this is a professional development platform as well as a community. And that platform launches April 17th. So that is our brand reveal, our brand launch that's happening in April. That's amazing. Um, and it's really, really exciting. I think it's gonna change the world. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so you're, you're a powerhouse. You're I love doing it. You're all kinds of things. That's I'm amazing. I'm about this close to publishing a book, too. Fantastic. That's amazing. <laughs> I, you'll have to tell us how you do all these things at some point. Very little sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and what, so what do you think the value of coming to the Henry Stewart Conference is? You know, I've been involved with the Henry Stewart Conference for probably over 20 years now. Um, I've, I've known them throughout my entire career. And the biggest value to me is the people and the people you meet and the people that you grow to connect with and you build the relationships with. Um, you don't know when you're first meeting somebody if they're gonna open that future door for you. Yeah. So my career has taken so many different paths and the people that I've met at Henry Stewart have opened many of those doors. Oh, that's awesome. So it's an incredible community of people. It's a great place to come and connect on like ideas and like concepts. And it doesn't matter what industry we're in or what our job title is because we all have similar problems in the workplace. And we come here to commiserate and build relationships and help each other evolve in our careers. Thanks for listening to the Damn Right Podcast. If you have people you want to hear from, topics you'd like to see us talk about, or events you want to see us cover, please send us an email at damnright at weravp.com. That's damnright at weravp.com. Speaking of feedback, please go to your platform of choice and give us a rating. We would absolutely appreciate it. And while you're at it, go ahead and follow or subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode. You can also stay up to date with me and the Damn Right Podcast by following me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash n slash c lacinic. And finally, go and find some really amazing and free resources focused just on damn at weareavp.com slash free hyphen resources. That's weareavp.com slash free hyphen resources. You'll find things there like our damn strategy canvas, our damn health scorecard, and the get your damn budget slide deck template. Each one of those also has a free accompanying guide to help you put it to use. So go get them now. Let's turn to the damn platforms in the room now. I'm gonna ask them each a series of questions, and I'm gonna edit it so that you can hear their answers side by side. Before we get into the questions, I'll introduce you to each of them. Christopher Morgan Wilson from Orange Logic, Shannon Deloach from Sinshare, Melanie Chalupa from Frontify, John Bateman from Ten of Us, Brian Cavanaugh from Binder, Brona O'Connor from Media Valley, Jake Athey uh, from Acquia. Tell us about your platform and what differentiates you from the other platforms in the room today. Orange Logic has created Cortex. Uh, and Cortex is an enterprise level asset management software that's actually able to adapt the way it presents itself depending on the user. So if you think you know, a lot of companies out there, they'll buy multiple DAM solutions, like their teams and departments will kind of go rogue and buy different software. But now there's a big push for companies to consolidate all that into one central source of truth. And that's where Orange Logic comes in with Cortex. Sensshare is an omni channel. DAM, PIM, and CMS platform. What differentiates us is it's fully integrated out of the box. So there's no you know, outside integrations needed to get that full fun functionality. Those uh, three functionalities, DAM, PIM, and CMS, are built on, on a common structure. So it's very flexible. 
Um, really where we stand out is if, you're, if you need DAM and PIM, right? Our niche is where you can buy one platform and have them both. So that's what we're very proud of. So Frontify is a brand center solution that's focused on all facets of your brand. So of course, looking at a critical element of your brand is going to be the DAM itself. But on top of that, we also have the ability to digitize all of your guidelines. And a lot of our clients will also include a multi-portal setup. So looking at your corporate brand, the assets that are associated with that, as well as the guidelines, sometimes campaign toolkits, but also being able to support product brands, employer brand, really every facet of your brand. So that's kind of our, our unique differentiator. Tenovus is about a five-year-old company, so relatively uh, young in the company of a lot of legacy <laughs> DAM providers. So we like to think you know, that we're differentiated because of the architecture of our platform built on Microsoft, uh, microservices, APIs, um, you know, and very flexible, modern technology, very scalable. Yeah, uh, so that sets us apart. Uh, it really means that uh, you know we can fit in into different ecosystems uh, in people's Martech stacks. You know, so very easy to connect with uh, other platforms, other technologies. And uh, yeah, so we, I think that's, that's one of the key differentiators. Binder is a leading digital asset management platform according to Forrester as well as our G2 customer reviews. And I would say what sets us apart is, you know, first and foremost, use cases in the enterprise. But when you look at Binder, it's really, you know, usability and configurability of the platform, uh, the most integrations and the, the, the biggest marketplace in terms of plugging into other platforms, and then a leading AI strategy, you know, centered around search as well as generative AI. So those are three things that come to mind, Chris, uh, but you know, there's certainly more as well. Media Valet is a Canadian dam. We are a digital asset management vendor. We are built on Microsoft Azure, so we are the only platform built exclusively on Microsoft Azure. Uh, we help customers across a variety of industries, so whether you're higher ed, nonprofit, manufacturing, media and entertainment, of all sizes, yeah. from SMB through to enterprise and we work with those organizations to deliver content at scale. So very much a core DAM platform that delivers seamlessly through integration so that your users can work in the systems that they love but have a great DAM platform at its base. And in terms of setting us aside, I think we're very proudly rated the highest security vendor for DAM. So the highest security rating, we've got a 99% rating there. So we're exclusively um, a league of our own in that area. Acquia is the open digital experience platform, and we provide content management, digital asset management, product information management, and customer data management solutions. And Acquia acquired Widen in 2021, which is where I come from as one of the early pioneers in the damn space. And uh, I've been in this space for 20 years. It's focused on some of our strengths. Our strengths in flexibility and adaptability, really leaning into that open promise of Acquia, and the fact that we integrate with, with, with anything, and that's really key among our roadmap priorities as well. And then having a scalable performance and governance model, and uh, being one of the few combined DAM and PIM platforms on the market. For this next question, taking AI off the table, what in your roadmap is your company most focused on or most excited about? Orange Logic. One of the big things right now is different file formats. Uh, last year was a huge push with uh, for MAM, so uh, media asset management, or I guess multimedia asset management. Uh, so video, uh, we're seeing a lot of requests for th working with 3D files, project files, resource management. So like not only being able to handle the assets, but the people working on those assets, their time, the budget. Again, it's that central source of truth where everything regarding the asset from ideation to creation all the way to final approval, like pushing out to other platforms, all that is handled within the dam now. Sinshare. We're most focused on our cloud initiative, right? So we're going cloud native. It's going to offer much more flexibility and faster speed to uh, deployment for our customers. So that's really the aim uh, to get our customers a usable system more quickly. We're going cloud native. Frontify. So something we've been focused a lot on lately is templates. So we do have a template offering within our portal, uh, or our brand portal solution, as of course, templating and being able to scale production across several channels is such a critical part of leveraging and getting the most out of your assets, but also um, being brand compliant. So something that we're looking to do right now is to further enhance that tool and be able to include things like video templates and being able to manipulate templates for each channel in one go. So I think that's something that has been really resonating um, with our clients. and. Uh, we're looking forward to um, offering more in that realm. Ten of us. 
when the company set about developing a, a dam platform, in the back of our minds was how can people get value from the assets and you know, how do you derive the, the most value. Previously, you couldn't really see how things were performing out in the wilds, you know, once it left the dam. Um, so our ideas really from the start, I think from the inception of Ten of Us, have been around that, uh, you know, smarter uh, use of the assets and smarter use of your resources, being guided by the, the data that you're pulling back from the assets uh, out through all your different channels, whether it's, you know, your social, through your e-commerce, etc. So I, I think that for us, it's a big focus at the moment. Finder. Composable uh, architecture and just uh, using a best in breed approach for sure. Okay, that's and, a lot of big words. Can yeah, you break yeah, that down for right. us a little bit? Uh, what we're most excited about is, you know, organizations taking what we call a best in breed approach to their MarTech stack, not being dependent on a single suite provider or single, you know, platform, more identifying needs and capabilities for DAM, but also adjacent technologies around CMS, marketing automation, what have you, and using the best vendor for each and integrating their platforms, you know, using APIs. And another big theme that is right tied into that is delivery of assets. So being more intelligent, more automated, more sophisticated of how assets get delivered out of the dam to downstream platforms that the customer touches. Media Valet. Ah, we've got an exciting roadmap ahead of us this year, which we are finalizing and building out the different components, but something that's coming up very soon that I think you're going to hear from us is about templating. So we're working with a great partner called Mark, and we will be releasing a templating solution in Q2, which will really enable our marketing you know, customers to really drive better impact by enabling their teams to work efficiently with their campaign materials, uh, drive more campaigns out the door, and then leverage your other resources on more strategic initiatives. So it's really empowering your team to do more, which of the time we're in, that is really important for our, our marketing organizations to drive that efficiency. Aquia. Top non-AI priorities of 2024, we have the priority of integrated workflows. We want more native integrations and more partnerships to really help our customers optimize their content operations, as well as to connect assets and metadata across the digital experience. Uh, we also have new insights analytics and reporting capabilities with new data visualizations and more analytics API endpoints coming so that customers can work with their DAM data, their DAM reports, within whatever business uh, analytics uh, tools that they use. And we also have a new search experience coming with enhanced usability, uh, accessibility, and some added features. And of course, we're advancing our PIM and DAM combination with added PIM and added syndication capabilities that we're very excited about for our customers that are makers and marketers of products. Putting AI back on the table, which of the following are you most focused on in the application of AI? Content generation, search, or tagging and description? Orange Logic. So it's a good mix of everything. Right from the get-go, we've always focused heavily on the search because there's really no point in having a dam if people can't find what you're looking for. And I, I used to be an asset manager on Disney's AFV for about seven years, so I was the one doing the tagging. And it's so hard to know what people are going to search for. So if you use the AI for the tagging and the searching, it kind of gives you a level up on you know surfacing those assets. And then the third one, we are now starting to focus on content generation, whether that's actual physical uh, images based off of other assets in your dam, document creation, like being able to create a brief before you kick off that project. So, again, right, you, you've, you've cheated and said all three. I asked you to pick one. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, let me, let me <laughs> try. It's okay, that's okay, that's fine. Uh, I think we'll, we'll assume I that- I think searching is the most important. Search, okay, all right, fair enough. Send share. Oh, content generation for sure. Okay. And can you tell us at all about where, how you're focused on content generation? Yeah, uh, so uh, generative AI, right? So um, uh, creating product descriptions, right? So you have a great product and you want to quickly create those descriptions. We want to generate that for you. Um, generating images, even videos. Um, the whole concept of, you know, create ones, use many, but now let's just do it with AI so you can do it faster. Um, and actually using AI to find specific areas within content that you may want to reuse. So I said a mouthful there, but yeah. really, it's, <laughs> it's really, um, it's a lot of our clients are using it 
for, yeah, creating those, those quick, you know, give me three bullets on my new product, right? So boom, we can generate it. Now that's in the dam. Now you can use that and push that out to, you know, your online channel or whatever other platform we that in. So Frontify. Probably search at the moment. So we've recently rolled out our um, brand AI assistant. So that's going to be able to help our clients have their end users enter their portal and search for assets and through their guidelines and kind of chat to this bot to be able to find what they need and also have that bot generate answers for them um, that might not even involve them going into the system further. So really looking at improving that kind of speed to search timeline as well. Um, we do have some other exciting things around the other elements that you mentioned. Okay, tell us. Tell us about it. Tell us about okay, it. Okay, yeah. So we're also... Um, rolling out a plug-in with OpenAI where you can generate images within the dam. So on that kind of generative um, image topic, that's what we're doing there. And we already have AI tagging, which has been really great in helping our clients to cast that wide net so that whatever their end users search for um, has you know, the most likely hood of producing results for them. Ten of us. Content creation, I think. And, you know, really, you know, the, the generative stuff is very interesting at the moment, but Things like uh, localization of, of assets is, it seems to be very prevalent on some of the big global brands that we're, we're working with. That's a, a, a big thing at the moment. Um, and then things like, uh, you know, some of the, the cropping and creating different derivatives of assets for different, uh, different formats and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I'd say probably the, the latter two you know, search and tagging, I think we feel ha have been done, you know, for a number of years and, and work, you know, it's kind of matured. But I think the content creation side of it seems to be evolving at, at a sort of exciting pace now, particularly around the generative stuff, you know. Binder. So I think when it comes to tangible applications and what our customers are getting ROI out of like every single day and discovering new use cases for, I would start with search because it's this whole philosophy of a great place to start with AI in your organization is maximizing existing data. And what is existing data for a dam? Well, it's usually the volume of assets you've built up over time, where if you can apply AI to it, there's just an added level of discoverability and an added level of efficiency you're going to get, which every organization right now is focused on when it comes to efficiency or getting more out of what they've already created. So, I know generative is exciting, and I know that you know, there's probably a lot to unlock from here on out, but if I think of the, you know, the here and now, it's really search, I think, represents the most efficiency. Media Valet. I would say you're going to hear more from us on search very soon with us developing that area. Tagging is a huge one, especially for our, our customers that have huge libraries, right? So they're ingesting a ton of content into the dam, and that automatic tagging with AI has been essential for them to get through uh, utilizing their catalogs. Something related to that that we're very excited about and I was speaking with our customer here about is the Jane Goodall Institute leverage video intelligence. So that's another AI capability that they're leveraging. And really it's about extracting that content from their video and then for reuse. So leveraging content, getting using AI to generate transcripts and social quotes and everything has been really important for that customer and a great story we talked about yesterday at uh, Henry Stewart down in LA. Acquia. Well, I want to say all three because we have all three among our, uh, our roadmap priorities for the next year. Uh, smart tags is, is one of those roadmap priorities, smart tagging and search. Effectively, search is the desired outcome. Uh, we also have this uh, concept of automatic video transcription and automatic video generation and templates, and so we are excited about the generation capabilities there. But I'm gonna go with search if I have to pick just one because okay. That's really fundamental to dam. Should I say fundamental, is if, if I will, yeah. <laughs> Got to get the dam pun in. And indeed, All yeah, right. it never gets old. Now there's a few providers in the room that are not dam platforms. Uh, they're add-ons, they're partners, they're technologies uh, that, work, that work alongside dam. And I'd like to ask them some questions. They're a bit different, so I'm going to approach this one a little bit differently and just talk to each one for a few minutes. Reinhard Holzner, uh, from Smith.io, we see that you are not a dam, so can you tell us what you are? Hey Chris, yeah, so uh, we are not a dam, but we work with your dam. So imagine you have your favorite dam uh, and you want to uh, give it different experiences for different audiences. We say the dam is not the right place for everybody, uh, to, uh, for every audience, for example. 
And so uh, if you want to reach other audiences like partners or the press or your employees, you might need a different experience and that's what we do. Uh, with our content portals, you can build a brand portal, you can build a media center, you can build a download area, you can build all those different experiences on top of your dam uh, that you can't do with your dam alone. Could you give us an example of a, of a, I mean, and I don't know if you're allowed to use client names or not, but maybe not, if you can just anonymize it. Give us an example of how one of your clients uses Cement. So we have several clients that we can name. For example, we have in Europe, we have Forever Group, which, which is one of the largest retailers in Europe. Uh, they use this, for example, for the internal uh, product portal or product imagery portal. So all the employees can access the imagery that is required through an easy to use, simple mobile enabled interface, and they don't need to go to the dam, which is very complicated, for example. Or we have uh, two of the largest sports organizations in the world uh, as our clients, where I cannot name, name them, but but I can tell the story. So um, they reach the press and the media through our portals uh, because, for example, the dam that they use is not really mobile enabled, it's not properly branded and stuff. And so they put the content from the dam in front of the media uh, when there's tournaments uh, and when there's uh, uh, events that they need to cover. Um, or um, we have uh, clients like Sonfi, which is a big uh, um, manufacturer of home automation devices. They're doing partner portals and providing all the content to their partners, to their resellers, like product imagery, uh, uh, data sheets, and so on and so on. Uh, so we have a, a beverages vendor from the US um, who is using that as a product information portal bringing together, for example, uh, content from the dam together with, uh, with uh, content from the Salesify PIM uh, in this case, uh, and really displaying that data or providing that data to their departments. For example, to see which marketing material is missing for which market. Uh, so a lot of different use cases, uh, and you see a lot of different audiences that have different requirements that not necessarily can be covered with the dam alone. Great. And um, can I ask, what are you, is there anything you're particularly excited about uh, in DAM in 2024 or at Henry Stewart DAM LA or anything that's caught your attention or that you're particularly focused on? Hmm, good question. Uh, so um, what happens in DAM, I think, is that everything professionalizes, uh, everything grows uh, a lot. Uh, we see also transactions in the marketplace going on, uh, mergers, uh, uh, companies taking uh, up other companies. I hope that in the future uh, this will be even uh, going into, into more interesting uh, direction uh, that we see larger players in the marketplace uh, that have more influence. The thing is we have a very fragmented dam marketplace right now with I think over 220, uh, 220 vendors uh, out there competing in the marketplace and it will be very interesting to see if, if this consolidates uh, because that would probably make things easier for the clients because they have a more complete offering for all those different units that are out there. David Sultan from OneTag. David, thanks for agreeing to talk to me. Um, nice to see you. Would you. Could we start off by you just telling me about OneTag and what you guys do? Sure, so OneTag is an integration platform as a service. And what we do is we connect any system to any system, kind of like Zapier. But our focus is on digital asset management, product information, and e-commerce. So we're able to make integration a lot easier, a lot faster easy to maintain, uh, easy to deal with upgrades, and just making the um, level of effort to your customers a lot easier to, ma to, to, to make. Yeah. So instead of having big projects, it's a lot smaller projects, and you can uh, predict a little bit more of that. So. That, sound, that sounds like a good goal. So it sounds like kind of uh, creating more predictability and efficiency around the integration yes. process, yep. which is, can That's be correct. unwieldy and, and a lot of, uh, a lot of risk as far as costs and time, I think. Correct, so yeah. That, that's great. Um, could you give us an example of maybe how, and you can, you don't have to use names, it's okay if you want to anonymize it, but just how like a customer has used OneTag, give us an example of that. Yep, so we have a customer who uses uh, OpenText as their dam and using Z uh, Syndigo as their syndication engine. So whenever it needs to go to Amazon or to um, any of those other marketplaces, they sell beverages. So we had to connect the, uh, the assets from their dam to their, uh, they had a separate PIM, which is, it's like in a, a separate PIM system. Uh, it was an in-house uh, PIM, and we had to syndicate it to Syndigo. So we basically are marrying all of that information in a very complicated flow, uh, and ensuring all of the information is married up between the product, the images, the, uh, into the website, into the marketplaces. Okay, all right, that's great, thank you, that's helpful. 
Um, and what's one of the features that's on your product roadmap that you're most excited about? So what? So when we first launched it a couple of years ago, it was really about just being a kind of more of a generic iPaaS solution, focusing on them and PIM, and we still are. But what we've realized is that a lot of our customers, what they really want is a quick way to get into a project. So we start building a lot of templates. So a template. So we call it a recipe. So a template or recipe. So say for example, you want to connect uh, in River to Media Valley, a Dan Le Ping. We can very easily spin up a recipe that already done the already has all of the hooks between those two systems, and then we can you can use that template to expand to your own flow that you need to build in your environment. So that's like a big thing we're doing okay. as well. And we also this is not short term but long term. We also are trying to look for an AI in order to for, to help the developers or uh, whoever is actually building the flows. Uh, to use AI to generate the flow for it by putting prompts. Oh, okay. But that's kind of a little bit longer in a roadmap. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting use of AI. It makes sense. It's going to be different than how the platforms are using it. Uh, yeah. uh, so that's, uh, that's interesting to hear. Eric Wengrowski, CEO of Steg AI. Eric, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Steg AI and what you do? Yeah, sure. So Steg is a state-of-the-art watermarking company. So we do watermarks for a variety of use cases, everything from leak protection to identifying generative AI, deep fakes, things like that. And we do it all with state-of-the-art watermark, uh, watermarking technology that we've developed in-house and we've patented. And we work with many of the dams here at uh, Henry Stewart to uh, bring our tech to customers. Great. And. Um can you tell me, like, on, in your roadmap, uh, what what are you most excited that's that's on the horizon that you can talk about? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, the benefit that Steg brings to our customers is primarily around security, and so, you know, with the explosion of deep fakes, generative AI. Seeing is no longer believing. I mean, like I've been working in this field and developing AI algorithms, uh, you know, for ten years now. Okay. And I, a lot of the times, I can't tell the difference between something that came out of a camera and something that came out of an algorithm. So it's getting to the point where you know, even relying on you know people better than me, forensic experts, aren't going to be able to tell the difference. And just given the sheer volume of content that people consume over social media, things like that. We really need tools to help understand what's real, what's trustworthy, what's mm. synthetic, what's organic, without labeling something as like, you know, just good, bad, just telling us more about the provenance. So, you know, we're working right now, uh, we've created tools to uh, help identify the origin of content, what's trustworthy. This is for everybody from generative AI companies to, uh, uh, federal governments who are wanting to ensure that there's a sort of a clean communication channel between them and uh, their nationals. Great. Yeah. And maybe could you help us wrap our heads around it a bit more, maybe by yeah. give us an, a, case, a, a case study, and you don't have to name names if you need to anonymize it, or but just help us understand how how some of your customers are putting your technology to use. Yeah, sure. So uh, a couple years ago, we were approached by a company that was um, experiencing. Uh, million dollar on average leaks for every one of their products uh, that had launched for the past three years. Uh, and they were having multiple launches a year that were all leaking ahead of time. This is a consumer electronics company. So they were working with a dam um, who we decided to partner with. That was great. But you know the problem was they really couldn't tell where these leaks were coming from. Is this stuff that was internal, people on their own team? Was it any of their uh, vendors, partners, anything like that? So we integrated Steg's watermarking technology with their dam. So automatically in the background, whenever they were sharing assets out or any step with the creation process, we were applying new watermarks every time. So if anything leaked out, we could always go back and identify the source. And when leaks happened, and they've happened many times, we've always been able to trace back and identify the source of the leaks and help the customer plug this extremely costly problem. And last but not least, What's the last song you added to your favorites playlist? Orange Logic. Dance Dance by Ryan Pruitt. Sin Share. An oldie but a goodie. It was Public Enemy and then The Hour of Chaos. Uh, so for some reason, I just had a hankering for that song. I added it to my playlist. Frontify. Do What I Want by Kid Cudi. Um, somehow wasn't in my playlist before today, and now it is. Ten of Us. Uh, Iron Maiden, Run to the Hills. That's right. one you probably haven't got one. <laughs> Binder. Square One by none other than Tom Petty. And right. so I'm a big 
Tom Petty fan, but that's not one that I had heard, and so I added it uh, this past weekend. Media Valet. Billie Eilish, What Was I Made For? And that was because I saw her perform it at the Oscars oh, a week cool. ago. <laughs> so that was that You one. were at the Oscars yourself? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Let's just say you were. Let's just I was say there. You were. Yeah, All right. Aquia. Uh, I'm a girl dad, so I'm going to go with Taylor Swift. And, and one that really gets me revved up is Ready For It. And that's from the uh, Reputation album. Cement. It's that uh, uh, Elton John Dua Lipa song. Okay. All right. All right. Great. It wasn't a guest. One tag. So I like John Prine. I know he's, I think he died a few years ago, but I love his music. It's country music. And I think the song it's called, uh, that's the way the world, that's the way that the world go around. Stag AI. All right. So I didn't add it to my favorites playlist, okay. but I took, so my wife uh, and I just had a baby a few months ago. Congratulations. As, as a present, uh, while she was still pregnant, I took her to see Taylor Swift. Uh, here in LA. Best husband award of the year. Yeah, it's, it's, I'll take that for this one. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I would not describe myself as a Swifty. I'm definitely not a hater, but you know, my wife is a real Swifty. And so I was like, hey, you know, I'll go, it'll be fun. Best concert I've ever been to, hands down. Yeah, so if I, it was awesome. All yeah. right, so give me a favorite Taylor Swift song. Oh, I like Colors. Now there's a fun session that happens at every Henry Stewart I've been to at least called Stump the Damn Consultants. It's hosted by Jared Jingers from the Real Story Group. A number of brave consultants get on stage. The audience asks a bunch of questions in an app. Jared Jingers looks at the upvotes to see what are the highest priority questions or the ones that have been voted on the most and ask those of the consultants. Now, all the consultants put on headphones with music so they can't hear the other consultants answering. And at one at a time, they answer. And then the audience votes on who has the best answer. And because I don't have the approval of all the consultants on the stage or of Jared, I'm gonna include just answers from Kara Von Molson from AVP in this one. It gave you a little taste of what that looks like and sounds like. It's a, it's a fun event. It's a little bonus for you here. If we're currently in DAM 4.0, what will DAM 5.0 be? Okay, so my answer is I don't think that there will be a DAM 5.0. I just, I, I, we, I, luckily I did my homework and I went to Jared's session earlier and it got me thinking about this exact question because as he was describing it, it just seemed more and more to be not damn anymore as, as kind of content uh, convergence and you know we have these beautiful and massive content orchestration engines um, it seems like the concept of dam as, as we know it today dam or ma'am as this kind of um, it, it, it just that idea makes it a silo in and of itself and I think that puts it into this corner which I just don't see the future being. So I, I just don't know if there is a DAM 5.0. I think it's an evolution. If you have a kid that has a Pokemon and you know how the Pokemon work, they go from like the basic Pokemon to evolution one or two. And I think by the time you get to evolution VMAX, you know, it's not even the same character anymore. And that's <laughs> When will AI tagging actually work right? Okay, so my question is, who's your damn better? Because it should already be working. So if you don't have it working, you come and see me and we help you find it. Just kidding, just kidding. Okay, in all honesty, I think where we are in that, um, in that space, the maturity is pretty good for specific types of use cases. So I think you have to get specific on what you want it to do. So if you're trying to do things that are more visual, object recognition, computer vision, what sends a photo of, what colors are in this photo, what's that object, things like that, there's, there's pretty good um, capabilities there now that are readily available. I think the harder part, and maybe, I'm not sure if this is what you're trying to get at, is when will we be able to not have humans do any kind of metadata entry? I don't know if we'll ever be quite there. There's certain metadata contextual information, provenance information, information about what campaign was this part of, what project was this a part of, what are the rights to this image, um, what's the credit line, 
Should it credit the AI that, that created it? You know, what all of those kinds of things, I don't think we're necessarily ever going to be there. So um, there's just a certain amount that I think that the, the, the AI tagging can and can do. But I think there's a there's a level of maturity that is pretty solid right now for certain use cases. So I'll just say it's limited, but it's it's evolving. What's the easiest AI win for a dam when your boss is forcing a quick AI answer? The quickest AI win right now. Um, okay, well, it's, I think it's kind of similar to the last question, which was some of that tagging. But I actually think the very easiest one you can unlock pretty fast is speech to text for video and audio. So that's pretty good. You know, you might have to like, do some little bit of editing. What's so funny back there? Like, no text, that's the end after. <laughs> Okay, vote for Kara. Uh, yeah, so text is, is, is pretty, is, is pretty, you know, that's an easy one. That's, and you can just get all of that, um, that, that transcription of your audio and video, and then you have so much searchable text, boom, an easy way, go for it, do it tomorrow. If you had to use a song to describe a dam, what song would you pick? Um, do you, do you know, the first like, word of this song title is a curse word, but it's B with those, like, you know, special characters and then I have my money. Expensive, right? I think we're voting for you on that yeah. one. <laughs> so here we are at the end of the Henry Stewart Dam LA conference. It's been a great conference. Uh, what are some of the takeaways and themes from this year? One is that a lot of people were talking about portals. Last year, that was a word that was being used, but we mostly saw it on the dam and technology provider side. This year, I heard a lot about it from users, people that were talking about real use cases, wanting to create seamless user experiences on both the download and the upload side, speaking to very specific audiences, both internal and external to their organization. Uh, and it felt like a thing that was was new in a new practical way. Um, speaking of practical, another thing that was that felt new this year was uh, we heard a lot about AI. Last year felt a bit more wide-eyed um, than it did this year. This year, people had clearly put it to use. They had grappled with the issues more. There was skepticism, but help mixed with healthy enthusiasm. Uh, and we just heard a lot about real-world AI applications conversations that were happening in organizations, proof of concepts, and then day-to-day -day use. Uh, and we still heard a mix of perspectives, but it felt like a new, uh, a new mix, a healthy mix, and something that I think represents the progress of how organizations are using AI. So that was interesting and fun to hear about. Um, lastly, I'll just say that the vibe in general was really good. It felt like there was more energy this year than last year. Um, and not to say last year was bad, but there was just something this year, there was a momentum, uh, there was a lot of great engagement. I think the content and the program was really good this year compared to last year. Not to say it was bad, but just this year felt exceptionally good. It felt cohesive. Uh, it had people talking in the, in the coffee breaks, uh, at the lunches, you know, there was a lot of conversation around the program, which just meant to me that they, they nailed it on the, um, on, the, on, on the authenticity of the topics. Um, and that it was resonating with people. So that's great. Uh, the, the, whoever did the programming did a, a great job. Um, I will say one thing that was missing, uh, and, and there, was, there was one company that was representing this. Actually, there was a few companies that were representing this, uh, but it just wasn't a topic that came up much, uh, which was con content authenticity. I heard about it in one session that I attended. Um, there was one vendor, Steg AI, that had a booth uh, Fidel was here, and then there was one other company, I think they were called Verify, um, that was here as in, in the audience. Um, they were focused on rights management um, and a one or two use cases for content authenticity. But I was surprised that there wasn't more there. Now, it's not a super sexy topic, you know, it's kind of security is not the most fun thing to talk about, but um, it's been bubbling up so much this year. And with the um, the massive amounts of content generation that's happening uh, with the uh, uh, questions uh, around content authenticity, um, you know, calling real things fake and calling th fake things real, um, and the meaning and potential impact that that has to uh, dams and archives, 
uh, is huge. So I was just surprised that there wasn't more about that. Uh, but I bet that that you know, will be a conversation that we'll hear a lot more about next year. That's going to be a prediction for next year. So we'll see. Um, anyway, it's been a great time. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed uh, the content around the, the Henry Stewart Dam LA recap. And remember, damn right, because it's too important to get wrong. Thanks for listening to the Damn Right Podcast. If you have people you want to hear from, topics you'd like to see us talk about, or events you want to see us cover, please send us an email at damnright at weareavp.com. That's damnright at weareavp.com. Speaking of feedback, please go to your platform of choice and give us a rating. We would absolutely appreciate it. And while you're at it, go ahead and follow or subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode. You can also stay up to date with me and the Damn Right Podcast by following me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash n slash c lacinic. And finally, go and find some really amazing and free resources focused just on DAM at weareavp.com slash free hyphen resources. That's weareavp.com slash free hyphen resources. You'll find things there like our DAM strategy canvas, our DAM health scorecard, and the get your DAM budget slide deck template. Each one of those also has a free accompanying guide to help you put it to use. So go get them now.